Now, Mark Twain once said there are three kinds of lies. There are lies, damn lies and statistics. But if he had survived to the age of Twitter, he may have also had to expand on that. Almost as quickly as the internet disseminates information, it also seems to disseminate misinformation and half-truths, and perhaps nowhere more so than fake and doctored images that do the rounds on Twitter, like uh, this image uh, behind me. It purports to be a view of the Himalayas from space. In fact, it's a 3D rendering by an artist. Well, here are some more uh, dodgy images. I particularly like the one of uh, Venice uh, being utterly frozen uh, and the water looking an absolute aquamarine blue. And if anyone's been to Venice, you will know that is not what the colour of the lagoon uh, looks like. Then we've got uh, this one, which is sort of half waterfall, half coral. And uh, what have we got over here? Goodness knows what we've got over there. Anyway, there we are. Well, I'm joined from Washington by a man who has devoted himself to exposing things like this. It is Paolo Ordeveza. And Paolo, very good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed uh, for being with us. Um, you clearly have some fun with oh, this. Oh, it's good to be here. Yeah, you clearly have some fun with this. Well, well I stand on the shoulders of giants, really. There have been a long line of debunkers before me, but... Uh, I figured there was still room for more, so, and I just get so annoyed seeing these pictures on Twitter being passed around with the wrong captions and the wrong, uh, the wrong information and authors not credited at all. Photographers, artists, uh, they're just passed around with such minimal information that it's very easy to, uh, to see them get, get mistaken, yeah, what, sometimes what's, deliberately. What, what started you off on this course? Annoyance, pretty much just <laughs> annoyance, because I would see these, I would see these accounts get retweeted into my stream, and I would say, "No, that's not it." And then they would get retweeted again, and I would have to say, "No, that's not it." And I figured it was time to start doing this. I've been doing this since email was around. I was always that guy who would reply to everyone, "No, you just sent us all a fake," and it made me a uh, kind of a killjoy. Yeah, and how do you? How can you be sure? when something is a fake and when something is for real? Well, every picture has a story behind it, a rich, varied story, an, a photographer or an artist, and it takes just a bit of Googling. It's, it's a little known fact that Google Images has a reverse image search that lets you plug an image URL or upload a photo to it, and it will search for similar images where they appear on the web and who posted them or reposted them as the case may be. Uh, just, just, to, just to interrupt you, uh, you won't see this, but we've just put up a picture of this extraordinary mm. looking toilet, uh, which I think was purported oh, yes. to be uh, in the home of uh, Viktor Yanukovych. You say otherwise. Oh, I tried to search uh, back and see where it really came from because it had been around on the internet on various viral sites long before the uh, Ukraine events had happened. And uh, w the farthest I got back was a site about Zambia. And it was posted on this site about Zambia, but the photo itself had been saved from a Russian social media site uh, from even earlier, from uh, early 2012. And that's where the trail went cold. It was a bit uh, difficult to find just how far back it goes. It doesn't help that it had been posted and reposted everywhere else, thus polluting the image searches further. And Paula, I suppose there is a serious point to this, which is, you know, luckily it's what keeps people like me in journalism and why you can't just, you know, people talk about, you know, is journalism dead in the age of social media when, you know, everyone is a citizen journalist? You, you, you do need to have people who you can rely on, hopefully, to give you accurate information. Well, that's your fact-checking department, and, uh, you know, love your fact-checkers, <laughs> they're there for you. And uh, I used to work in journalism, and the fact-checking department was an old and established okay. institution that uh, people really should use more. Paolo, very quickly, where did you get your tie from? It's extraordinary. I thought something had gone wrong with our cameras. <laughs> oh, it's a Think Geek 8-bit tie. I think it started out as an April Fool's joke, and people liked it so much that uh, they actually produced it. It's... Uh, Yes, it's a very Commodore 64. <laughs> it's actually fantastic. Paolo, thank you very much indeed. It puts this rather kind of boring effort to shame, doesn't it? Anyway, Global will be back very shortly. Do stay with us.